Hey everyone, today we're gonna to be talking about the Fuji X100V and the X100VI. The five and the six. These cameras are, they're almost modern day classics. They are so in demand. The last two years, you could expect to play, pay more than retail for a used one. It's like the newest iPhone, everybody's lining up out the door to get them. So what's, what's the craze about? We're gonna dive into that and I'm gonna tell you what you should know before you consider buying one. If you're new here, my name is Wes and I do photo and video and tech reviews. Stick around if you like this at the end of the video, hit like and subscribe. Thanks so much. Today, we're gonna look at the top viewed videos about the X100 series, particularly the five and the six. And I'm gonna share with you what those reviewers had to say. And then I'm gonna look at all my videos on the X100 5 and tell you, should you buy this camera or not? Or should you not buy the camera? Maybe you shouldn't. This video is for you. Hey, it's Wes, and I want to talk to you today about the Fuji X100V. I'm holding this Fuji X-H2S because I love Fuji cameras, but honestly, I've had a bit of a love-hate relationship with the Fuji X100V. I've bought it twice, and I've sold it twice. So that tells you something. The second time I sold it is because the price to resell it was five to 600 bucks more than I paid for it. So that tells you uh, a little bit about the hype about this camera. So I sold it because there's other Fuji cameras that can do just as good or better. So the first thing I wanna do is dive into what Kai W says. He's one of my favorite reviewers. I love his content, love his accent. And uh, in this video, he says, if you're thinking about it, just go for it and buy it. I don't often say it. In fact, I don't think I've ever said it, but if you think you might like this camera, just go ahead and buy it. This is the Fujifilm X100-6. And I love that just jump in attitude, right? It's, it's just, it's okay. You don't have to worry about making a mistake, but he cautions, it's not perfect. So Kai W loves it and he says, it's retro classic, but Matt Granger, he's like, yeah, it's beefed up and it has the 40 megapixel sensor. That's true, but it's also got IBIS and that makes it heavier. It does, however, come with a bit of a trade-off in this instance. IBIS being mechanical, it has to add size and weight to your camera unless they've removed something. And for this camera in particular, I think that's an issue. It may seem unfair to single out this line, but it's noticeably heavier in the hand than the Generation 5. So when you're going out to do street photography, realize you have a heavier camera than you did in the predecessor in the line. And so you might think about like, is this camera gonna wear me out? Is it gonna hurt my wrist? Actually, the Fuji X100V, I had to add a grip because it's really hard to hold on to. So now you're adding the grip on top of the heavier new model. So that's something to consider. So just leaving this point here, I mean, it's, it's a bit heavier for the street shooter, but Kai says it could produce some all right video. That means you could take some all right video now because when you took video with the X105, it's still a bit kind of shaky. I like the way he says, all right. All right, all right, all right. So just think about whether you want the extra weight in a street photography camera. And like Kai says, it produces all right video. And we're gonna get to that piece a little bit later. All right, let's talk about the 40 megapixels and the autofocus. In the X100 6, yes, we have the 40 megapixels. But as Gerald Dundun says, for street photography, do you really need 40 megapixels? Like, are you printing billboards off your street photography shots? So, that's something to consider. But as Matt Granger points out, now we have subject detection at a high class, a high performance level in this street photography camera, which is great for moving subjects. It has all of the different subject detect modes. It's a regular John Candy film of planes, trains, automobiles. So this is really kind of a counterpoint. Um, you know, Gerald Undun even says that the video is uh, gonna give you a lot. And by a lot, he means a lot of rolling shutter. Let's get into that sensor testing, starting with rolling shutter. Let's start here in the 6.2K mode now. So in 6K24, we're getting a rolling shutter of 24.6 milliseconds, which is not good. That is pretty jello -y. Uh Ideally, I'd say we want to hit, you know, 15 milliseconds and lower, and ideally single digits. So there is that to consider. But back to the megapixels, Matt Granger, he says, you know, do you really need this? I mean, we talked about printing the bull billboards a second ago, but the other thing is like in your street photography, are you really gonna need to zoom in to see all the pixels on a pigeon's beak? 
I mean, come on, I don't think so. Now more resolution can be a great thing, but is it on a camera like this? Uncompressed RAWs on this guy are now around 85 megabytes each, which means you're going to need bigger and faster SD cards for your camera and more storage on your computer. It also puts more demands on the buffer and processor of the camera itself. It is a beast of a camera, but that also means bigger file sizes, lower buffer times, slower buffer times, slower buffer speeds. And so it takes a toll when you're processing those videos. These are photos, Wes. So it takes a toll when you're processing those photos. Something to consider. On video, Gerald Dundon says, it's got 6K. <laughs> I remember when I started shooting my first camera that I bought for myself, 4K was amazing in the mirrorless space. And now this street photography camera has 6K. But again, Gerald Dundon points out, it's gonna be jello-y with that rolling shutter. So you wanna keep that in mind when you're making your decisions. Another complaint is from Kai W who says, it feels like you're getting trolled by Fuji when they put a 2.5 millimeter audio jack on a camera. I mean, you have the adapter in your bag, or do you? Did you leave it on the counter? You've lost it. It's day one and you've lost it and you don't have a way to connect your microphone into the camera. Fuji, stop, go, go with the standard sizes. So another thing about that is the internal ND. It's my favorite feature. They do, you can just cut the light with the flippers of a switch and now it's got IBIS. So there's all these features that really make this camera seem attractive. But let's be honest, no one is shooting the next Hollywood blockbuster on the X100 6. Nobody is. I mean, are you a movie maker? Are you Martin Scorsese? All right, so we've heard from a bunch of YouTubers, guys, you know, Kai W, Gerald Undone, Matt Granger. So I was like, can we get a different perspective? So I called up a friend, a YouTuber, Kendra, you should know her, you should follow her, amazing video content. And I said, hey, do you shoot with the Fuji X100 series? And I said, tell me what you love or hate about it. So here we're gonna hear from Kendra. Hello. Hey guys, my name is Kendra and I make videos about photography and videography over on my YouTube channel. And I've been shooting with my Fujifilm X100V for nearly three years now. My favorite thing about this camera is how small and compact it is. It's fixed lens makes everything much easier for me. So I don't have to think about what I'm bringing to go shoot. I just pack the camera and I'm ready to go. I found myself able to take more photos of my daily life, which was my main goal in looking for a camera at the time. And the shooting experience is really nice. I love all the physical dials it has over here on the top. And on the front, the physical aperture ring is really nice. One thing that I don't really love about this camera is that it lacks in-body image stabilization. Um, it's not super apparent in photography because for the most part, I'm shooting in the daytime and with a fast enough shutter speed, you really it doesn't really matter. But for me, I'm a videographer and I love having a camera that can do both photo and video really well. And the video quality is really good on this camera. It shoots in 4K, but the one issue is that it's so small and lightweight that you get every little shake on camera, especially because there's no image stabilization. That's the one pitfall for me about this camera, but I understand that this is a photography first camera. So just beware that if you are considering getting something for the hybrid nature, maybe that's why you would consider getting the X106 over this camera. But yeah, I don't really have any other complaints about this camera. It's been really good to me for the past three years. And if you're looking to get into the X100 series, I would highly recommend it. Thanks, Kendra, for breaking it down and sharing with us your perspective. That's very cool. And now we're gonna end up with my personal relationship with the Fuji X100V and what I think about the X100VI or the 6 or the Mark 6 or whatever you wanna call it. The first thing is it's got this um, weird autofocus range limiter where it says it'll only focus on the subject between a certain range. And that seems cool. Like I could set my camera there and stand in front of it Yes, but when you're using that mode, it turns off face detection. So I'm actually unable to use this when I want to film myself, which is bizarre. So it's like having a Formula One car, but you can't use the turbo when the air conditioning's on. I guess you wouldn't have air conditioning in a Formula One car. Actually, Fuji, you're doing a pretty good job. All right, so another thing that I complained about the camera is the back screen, the way it flips up is this tiny little tab. It's very hard to get a hold of. That was one of my pet peeves with it. 
Um, so keep that in mind. Um, Fuji can improve this design. Another thing that Gerald Undone pointed out was that when you have the tripod plate on, you can't open the battery door. So like these little things are uh, problematic. I guess you could just have a base plate onto it and then connect the uh, tripod plate onto that and then that would allow you to use the bat uh, bathroom door. That allows you to access the battery door. All right, all in all, I think the thing that I could tell you is that I bought this camera twice and I sold it twice. Um, and what they added in the X106 does not fix the reason why I sold it twice. It's a great camera. It's a classic. It looks gorgeous. It looks beautiful. But adding 6K video, adding 40 megapixels, adding IBIS, none of that really changed the Mark V to the Mark VI. I, I actually feel like, I don't know, it's weird. It's like it's too much. It's, I mean, I, I kind of think the V was perfection and the VI is overkill and now it's hard to get because they packed in all these features and people are buying it because it seems like it's a better deal because of all the features. And actually that's, that's not really what photography is. Photography is knowing what you're trying to capture and finding the camera that motivates you to get out and shoot and captures what you need to capture. So I don't think there's a person out there who's like, oh, if only the X100V had IBIS, I would be able to shoot the shots that I want to shoot. You're a beautiful person and a good person. And if no one has told you that today, let me be the first one to tell you that. All right, back to the review. All right, let's talk about Fuji magic and nostalgia. Now, like Matt Granger said, this camera has a little something special and that's what the craze is all about. But what is that special thing? It's the retro dials, it's all the, those controls that are so tactile. And um, it just is, it adds up to more than just having a camera. There is a little mystique, there's a little, like for example, I would get compliments when I had my X100V with me. No other camera has ever done that. That's the kind of like mystique you're getting with the Fuji X100V. So here's the thing, is the camera for you? I mean, it has its flaws, it has its strong parts, but here's the thing with the X100V or the X106 is like Matt Granger said, it's like almost perfect. But is almost perfect good enough? Maybe it is, maybe that's all you need is to be inspired to get out and shoot. <laughs> whether, that, whether that's the X100V or X100VI or any other camera, choose the camera that makes you wanna go out and shoot. That's it. Drop a like, leave a comment, and let me know what you think. I'll see you in the next video. Peace. Scary. Oh, that was terrifying. You almost hit me in the face. Yeah, shout out to Kendra for contributing a video. That was really cool. Thank you very much for that. And Gerald Undone, Matt Granger, and Kai W, I will never meet you or know you in real life, but you are my heroes. Keep doing the YouTube thingy. I salute you, sir. I salute you, sirs. That's it. That's my two cents. Thank you for watching. And uh, if you like this video, like it, like it. And if you want to subscribe and see more videos like this, go for that.